All right, hello everybody. Um, my name is Miguel Moreno. Um, I'm here to present you Mastering XML with Dolphy. Um, I've done some similar presentation in the past, but it was only focusing on XML Mapper. This time, since the coding bootcamp is more like a one-on-one sessions to get um, uh, uh, starting developers or anyone that is not fully familiar with Delphi and they don't actually know how to do certain things. So this is more like a basic introduction. How to actually master XML with Delphi or Delphi. My name, Miguel Antonio Moreno. I'm an electrical engineer and software developer. My main focus is on embedded and IoT and OM solutions with both hardware and software, the full ecosystem of the IoT devices. And this is the agenda for the agenda for today. Mastering XML with LP. What is XML? Then we have Jason, why bother about XML? Then I will show you the information standards based mainly on XML nowadays. How can Delphi help you to process XML documents? Then some XML libraries and XML frameworks and tools. And then a lot of hands-on coding to show you how to actually do it in Delphi. First, a little theory for those that are not pretty familiar with it. Um, almost every single developer nowadays is very familiar with JSON, but some, especially the younger generation, they 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 bypass or totally skipped XML. Um, no wonder is because nowadays all REST services are mainly driven by X by JSON. That doesn't mean you cannot use XML. The actual payload of a web service can be anything, and XML is one of them. But what made REST services pretty popular is that by using JSON, the thing gets fairly simplified and you don't need to deal with uh, some of the complexities of XML. But XML is still out there. So it's a software and hardware independent tool for storing and transporting data. It stands for Extensible Markup Language. Now, XML is the same technology that is behind HTML. So HTML, the, the standard used for rendering web pages is actually XML, only it's a custom version with very specific keywords. XML overall was designed to store and transport data. That is the main reason why HTML uses XML as a foundation. And XML was designed also to be very self-descriptive. You can see here on this sample on the right-hand side of this slide, uh, a snippet of an XML. You see node, which is an element, and then the tagged elements. What you see there, uh, tool, tope, uh, slash tool, is an element in XML, and it contains a piece of data. Think of these as fields. So in XML, you have container elements, in this case, note, and then you have the actual field elements, the ones that con contain the data, the fields themselves. So two from heading and body here are field let's think of them as field elements, although they have a, a very specific uh, notation. The difference between XML and HTML, again, is um, uh, they have different goals. Even the, the technical foundation is the same. The goals are different. XML is designed to carry data. And HTML it was designed to display data. That's why it's used for web pages. The XML tags are not predefined. So XML is just a standard on how to structure the document, but HTML goes a little bit forward and defines specific tags. Uh, the foundation for knowing what's an XML file is, it's a tree structured data in form of a tree. You always have a root element, like in this sample that I'm showing you a bookstore element, a bookstore sample of an XML file. So you will have one single master node at the very top. It's the grand, grand, grand pattern of everything or the root element. And then from there, you start have children, child nodes below it, child elements. And then it's unlimited. How many you can have on the next level is unlimited. And how many levels you can go deep is also unlimited. That's why XML makes it very flexible for uh, like dynamic kind of data where you don't know exactly how deep you can go with the levels below the parent node, then XML is for you. Let me do a bit explanation here. 
This uh, tree node shown on your left hand side is represented by the actual XML file on the right hand side. So there's always a header that tells you the specific version of XML and encoding. This is very critical, especially for the software, to know what is the actual encoding. Nowadays, you can say that 99.9999 of the times it will be encoded in UTF-8, which is the nowadays standard, de facto standard for any web service out there. Uh, so just bear in mind that the, when you are uploading a raw XML file, just make sure that your editor is enabled to recognize UTF-8 because UTF-8 doesn't have a BOM, a beginning of mark uh, field signature. Uh, UTF-16, usually they do, but UTF don't. So anyhow, so you can see on the right-hand side the actual XML file. Now, some of the nodes like category are repeating. So you have the, the structure defined on the left-hand side, but how many times you can repeat them is unlimited, up to a point. As I said with you, if we have JSON, why we should bother about XML? Let's just go ahead with what we are familiar with, and especially Red Studio has a lot of components that support very neatly uh, using REST, REST services and JSON. You have the REST debugger, which is a pretty neat and very a nice tool for testing web services in JSON. So why bother? Number one is both are used in web development. You, you may not see it, but XML is still out there. And both are also used to separate data from presentation. So they are not like HTML. They are for carrying data. So XML and JSON coexist in the web services uh, domain for carrying data. So JSON as I explained, is mainly ruling on modern REST web development, where you have a single endpoints, and the endpoints usually transfer the documents using JSON. But XML rules, XML rules in a slightly older standards called SOAP. SOAP web services are a bit more complex than REST. The one reason the REST services took off so fast and they are so popular nowadays is because you don't need any hard preparation in advance to make it work. You just dump your JSON data in your web service, either when you're doing the put or get, and that's it. You just expect the client software to receive that JSON payload and then process it accordingly. But if you think about it strictly, there's really no thorough validation or enforcement of any rule. Actually, it's totally free and open. But XML is, is, has some built-in rules which make it more robust and make it more appropriate for enterprise corporate level data transfer where you do need data validation. You do need some kind of data rules and to make sure that the data being transferred in enterprise software complies with some definitions. These are the standards that are based mainly on XML. So these, these standards, when you are using web services with any of these standards, you don't use REST. You may, you may, but actually if you're connecting to an enterprise endpoint or to a, a government endpoint, you will get XML. Even if you try to send JSON, what you will be getting out of those web services will be XML um, surrounded in an envelope called SOAP. SOAP is just another structure to um, surround to the payload of XML. So these electronic data interchange standards is ANSI X12, which is predominant in North America. You have UN EDIFACT, which is predominant everywhere else except in North America. You also have GS1 EDI. It's a standard used globally, especially for supply chain, mainly for sending invoicing, um, shipping orders, advance notice, all those kind of things for the logistics staff and the supply chain. And there's something that has been taking off very, very fast in the last 10 years, which is electronic invoicing. It started in selected countries around 2010. And surprisingly enough, the key leaders here for electronic invoicing is not the US. They are not enforcing it anywhere soon yet. Europe just started to put some deadlines. 2018 was a deadline for European invoicing and then it has been started to be enforced starting 2020. But it's Latin America, the, the region of the world that has the lead right now. 
almost all Latin American countries nowadays already enforced electronic invoicing. And that's because electronic invoicing uh, makes it much easier for the governments to control the invoices and avoid fake invoicing and fake duplicates. This is just a quick picture of how the invoicing is right now. You can see that all those blue blue countries, countries in blue, either are in the process to implement it or have gone 100% into it. And the red ones is they are, they already set a goal, but they haven't started yet. And then the gray ones, they are totally out of the loop of electronic invoicing. You can see that more than half of the world is already embracing electronic invoicing. Now, how can Delphi help us to process these XML documents? We have these XML libraries built in. Number one, and the predominant one, the key one you may be using is the XML document. There's another one that you need to download separately, which is OXML. There's another one called OpenXML and another one called nestlib.xml. These three ones are open source softwares and they're pretty popular. If you browse or check on the forums for users that need to use XML, these three libraries are pretty popular. But still the key one, the top one, is the one built in with Delphi, which is XML document. I'll explain it further. And there, there is some frameworks. Um, frameworks with frameworks, I try to say there's tools that help you process XML in a more specific manner. So not just open the XML file and read it and write it, but in more specific use cases. Um, Delphi comes with two tools for this purpose. One of them is called the XML data binding. It's a wizard that helps you to create classes so it saves you some time from having to manually uh, parse through an XML file. And then you have XML mapper, which is a specific tool to do transformation from XML files to data sets. And then in the data sets, you treat it like a normal data set in your application. First of all, I need to uh, make sure which features you have depends on your Delphi version. Uh, you can see here, I'm sorry I didn't put the, the header, but the columns you see on the right hand side, uh, the first column is for the pro version of Delphi and the next one is for the enterprise version. So some of these tools may or may not be available on your Delphi software, depending on the version that you have. I'll start with the XML document object model, which is a key main one, the one that you will be using almost all of the time. I have here an XML document It's a sample purchase order in XML. The first thing I need to show to you is to distinguish the, the elements. I did some brief explanation on the presentation, but here I'll let me show you with the real life XML. Again, you have, let me just increase the zooming level so you can have a better view of it. The first line at the top is the header. The header tells you the XML version and the encoding. There's only one header. Next, you have the root. You have the root element. Let me collapse everything so you can see. You have one single root element always. You can see there's only one order being there, the one that I just collapsed. And under that one, I'll just do a simple collapsing to, so it's easier for you to see. On the next level, we have message header. Message header is a node. So these ones that have a tag, you can see that here you're highlighting order is a node. And this node being the parent encapsulates everything. The syntax of XML tells you that you open it with the angle brackets, then you have the name or the tag of the node. In this case is the order tag. And to close it, you also have the, the angle brackets, but you need to back this, the normal slash, the forward slash, before the name. So this is the syntax for the ending. This is the start of the node, and this is the ending of the node. Everything between those two uh, structures is the actual content of the node. So next, you have the first children node, which has the tag name of message header. So this node 
has a different syntax, which is also valid. It has all this content here. These are called attributes. So within a node, when you have the tagging name, you have the option that right next to the tagging name, define a property name and then the property value. So it's a key value pair in text where you define the name of the property, in this case, source equals, and then enclosed in quoted text is hire firma. This is a attribute. This combination of key value pair is called an attribute in XML. Those are optional, can or cannot be. The other node here doesn't have any attribute. It's just the element, the node, the element, the the element node with nothing other than the children. Message header, which is the next node in the hierarchy, has all these attributes. All these attributes are key value pairs. And by definition, they always have to be, as shown here, even if they are a number, they must be quoted. That's per the XML standard. So everything follows this kind of syntax. The key or name of the attribute and the value of the attribute. And the way this is closing is with a backslash. When you do this, that means that the node ends here. So the node is defining its attributes and it ends here. So there's no more information. This node does not have any children. It only has attributes. All these attributes that you see here are inside this element node, message header. Since it's finished right here after the attributes, that means there's no more body or more content. That's it. Now we have next, you see on this same hierarchy, next you have order header, which is another node, and then you have order body. So at this very level, you can see that order, the parent node has three children, has message header with all these uh, attributes, it has order header and it has order body. Let's see what these ones have below it. You see now that order header has order three nodes inside it. And then order header is finished with the slash and the order header tag name. So, this is the enclosing way to define a node. So that means that these three nodes here are children of order header. Then order body has these repeating nodes. Now, this is one of the key things about XML. You can have the same nodes repeating, which are very useful for specific cases, like when order body is defining, in this case, the line item numbers of a purchase order, then you can have more than one line item number. Then no problem. You just keep adding and adding nodes as many as you need to reflect the actual line item numbers. So the, the first thing that comes to our mind is this reflects some kind of records in a database. And yes, this is one of the specific use cases when you may want to transform an XML file into a data set. If your XML file has a database-like kind of a structure, then you have a good reason to use a transformation from your XML to a database, which is similar to other, other tools that we have for JSON, by the way. JSON is also used to, to transfer sets of records from the web services. Okay, that's enough. Let me just expand the full body. So you can see the full body of the, of the document. So we had other header, which goes down below. Then this is another node, other reference. Um, it has two children. And this node, you can see that here has some context. This text here between the ending, the starting tag and the ending tag, this is the actual body text of the element. So you can have elements like the order header and the order reference that only contain other elements. They are like a part of the structure. They are only middle persons in the structure. But at the very end, you will have some leaf element or text element, like here born, which have actual real data. 
and that data will be enclosed between the two tags, the start and ending tag. So the key thing to take here is, no matter how complex your structure is in XML, all this only defines some kind of hierarchy and leveling among all the nodes, but the only ones that carry some final field of data is number one, either an attribute, like this one here, an attribute that has a key name and the value, then this is a definite piece of information being carried by the attribute. And the second piece of information you will find in an XML is the text body enclosed inside an element. These are clearly called text elements, which differentiate from just a raw element. If I say this is a raw element, it means it doesn't have data. It only contains other elements. But if I say I have a text element, text node element, it's like here born or B or D, they do have final data. Now, these are also called leaf nodes because are, these are the last level. These are like an endpoint node. These ones normally should not have children. Now, nothing stops from someone actually doing it, but normally the expectation is that element nodes with text are the final node elements. Is the final one carrying some piece of data. Now, having said that, you can see here that all the data carried by these invoice structure, let me reduce the file. What I'm showing you is how can you read this in Delta? What we need finally is to have access to either these attributes or to the text nodes, which are actually carrying the data that we need to extract the data, the value, the actual payload out of the XML thing. So let me we'll go back to Delphi, see what's the object element. What I explained to you right now is, uh, they call it the, the document object model, is that you should be expecting nodes that are part of the structure. They will never have actual text content. They will only care, contain other nodes that are part of the structure. And the ones that do have some, some field of information will be leaf nodes or text nodes, and they should never have a children. So that's expectation by the document object model. Let me go back to I'm sorry. Let me go back to Delphi. Here I have a, uh, an application. To make it simple to show you how this application works, I have embedded the form, the actual form. This unit in Delphi has embedded in string form the exact same XML file that I just showed to you. So just bear with me. That is to make it also work. Since this sample application, I made it for multi-platform to avoid problems or where to read the XML file from in, in your iPhone or, or your Android device, I just put it in, a, in an embedded uh, form. That is exactly the same document that you just saw in my editor here. So this XML file is the same one that I'm embedding here with the name of a constant string. So that's the one I will be using for the sake of this presentation. I have this application, um, FMX, FireMonkey application. And what I'm using, the key component is this one. You can find it on your XML. And then you will find XML document. That's the key component that we are using here. XML document it's an implementation of libraries to parse and read XML files with all these rules that I just showed to you. Now, there is one thing to you need to be aware of. This component, in case of Windows, relies on the Windows um, system libraries for parsing XML. But if you're using a multi-platform uh, multi application, then you need a library that is multi-platform. So here, DOM vendor means the document object model vendor of the actual library that is being used by this component in the background. The normal value is blank. When it's blank, it means that it uses this one, MS Windows. So typing MS XML or leaving it blank will always use 
the Microsoft Windows library. If you're on Windows, no problem, it will work. But if you're running a multi-platform application and you forget to change this one, at runtime time you will get an error because it's trying to load the Microsoft libraries, which are not available on the multi-platform. So if you're using a multi-platform application, you need to switch to either Omni XML or ADOM XML. These two are cross-platform. They are available for all supported platforms by Delphi. Uh, you will say, why would I need to use the, the other ones? I can just put Omni XML all the time. Well, there's some trade-off on speed. If you're using some heavy, heavy loading of XML files, the Microsoft one is a bit faster than the other two, just because it's, it's been there for so many years and it's been used for so many corporate enterprises that Microsoft has fine-tuned it extremely well. So, but that is only if you're doing some heavy, heavy stuff with XML, which normally is not the case. We're handling single documents and we're doing something that you can just bear with it. But just wanted to mention why would you not decide to always use Omni XML and forget about that problem. But there might be specific cases when, when you do need to use the Microsoft One, even if you have the rest available. Anyhow, that is just the built-in library, the, the library that it would use in the background. So we use Omni XML with a multi-platform one. And I will step through the code on actual use cases, how you access the code. Uh, one thing I need to explain to you, there is a way to define an nth node in XML. That standard is called XPath. And XPath means, how do I describe this element that I'm highlighting here. Let's say I'm highlighting the born element here that has this piece of data. Here with this software that I'm showing, this editor helps me. Here at the bottom, if you can read it, let me just make it more readable for your screens, okay. Here you have what it's called an X path. An X path is like a, Think of it like the, this, the directory path on your computer is very similar. It defines all the levels above the specific element that you want to address. So it gives you a um, unique full path of how to reach that element. So here you read it like order. We, we start with the slash, which means at the root level, then order, which is this one, then slash, then the next slash, then the next one is order uh, order header, because here I'm in this node. Don't be confused, I'm not on message header, I'm an order header, so that's the, the next element here. Then order reference, which is the next node. And then finally, I'm in born. So the X path of this element is order slash order header slash order reference slash born. That is the X path or XML path that points to this node. I'm putting in my application the X path so you know what it is. Now the convention is when the element that you're pointing to is an attribute, the X path calls to put it with an at sign. So an at sign always means an attribute. So here, where am I pointing to? This path here is pointing to order message header at source. That means is order message header at source. So I'm pointing to this attribute with that X path. So I'm trying to reach this piece of information, information from my Delphi app in the first, in the first field here. The second one, I'm defining another attribute right there also, order message header, document version date is this one. So that X path order order slash message header at document version date is pointing to this attribute, this specific one here. And finally, for this demonstration, another X path, which is order, order header, order reference born. That's exactly the one we were at a few minutes ago, this one. So it's order order header, order reference, born. And I'm pointing to this element. 
So on X path, keep in mind when you see the at sign, it means it's pointing to an attribute. When there is not an X and an at sign, it's just a normal uh, node element. And since this is the final one on the X path, it is expected that that element is a leaf node. That means it has no children underneath it and always has some piece of information, just like this one. So that's the expectation. But maybe some software, some file that you receive may not be compliant. So you need to be aware and be prepared. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. Because since XML is just a text file, it could be malformed or could be put manually by someone else or the software has a bug, whatever. There's many reasons the XML file is not compliant. So don't assume that the XML file is perfect. This is one of the key things. And you may know this also by JSON. JSON can be tricked with or tamper with because of bugs in the software or a bad transmission, whatever. I'm going to run this application so you can see how I'm going to access these three nodes and what are the actual pitfalls when using the XML object document model by Delphi. I want to make sure that I'm running in the bug mode so I can, you can see how it goes. Okay, so here's the application, and I will do a load test. This one will be stepping line by line to show you how I'm making the access to each one of these three uh, elements, XML elements and property attributes. So here I'm an entry point. The first thing I'm about to do is to actually load the XML document component the one that you saw on this one here, which is the component that I just dropped there. That's my object that will contain the XML data. So I call the method load from XML. This method is to feed it from a string. And the string is the one that I showed you I have embedded here as a sample document. So that's the reason I'm using this method, load from XML. But if you are reading from a file, you have this other method, load from a file. And if you're reading from a stream, then you have this other method. Any of these three methods will load the actual data and the document internally will parse, will read one by one, first the header, so it can get also the encoding it has, and then it will read each one of the nodes. And then if it's a top node, a top level node, it will expect that it has nothing other than possible some attributes and then see if they has children nodes and it will assemble in memory the full tree structure of this XML text file. So that's what's happening when you call this routine, this procedure, this method. So as I'm doing it right now, it's done. So now the XML document one has parsed it. If there are some errors, you may want to um, enclose this with a try except because if the XML has errors, it will raise an, an, an exception and the exception itself will tell you that there was some error inside the XML. So if you don't, if you don't want the, the exception to be thrown at the application level, you may want to trap it right here. The first thing we need to do is to get the top level node. There is this property called document element. The document element represents the topmost node in the XML file. It's the root node, the top node. So you need to get that in order to traverse through the whole structure. I'm going to do that right now. Then you see here on the Delphi um, watch, uh, variable watch, an element XML node has been assigned and the, node, and the type is an XML node interface. So that means perfect. I have, I'm pointing right now to the very first node. I mean, I'm gonna do some typical assign, assignments so you can see what's there. First, you can get the node name and then you can get the node value. What is the node name of the root node is order. So the tag or the name of the node is order. When I pa pass through this one, you see that N1 is changed to order now. So I successfully got the name of the node. 
And now I'm going to process the next one that gives me a node value, which is the actual value of that node. Hey, you may say, hold on, this is a two broad node. It doesn't have information. It only has children nodes. Okay, let's see what happens. An exception is raised because this is invalid. That node is not expected to have any value. Hold on here. So what happened is I'm catching the exception here. And then the exception was shown very quickly. I, I missed it. And then the V1, instead of being loaded with something here, I put it as empty. Hold on, I have some issues here. I may have to restart that thing, so bear with me for a second. Okay. Okay, I'm back here. So let's run this application again. Gonna reach the exact same point that was at. Okay, so here we got, we got the runtime error, which is telling you that um, element order doesn't contain a single text node. And so it's, if you let the, the exception go all the way up, then that's the actual message you get here on the exception. Since I'm catching the exception, I just made that message available on the screen and then assigned the value one to be empty. So this is number one. Don't expect that parsing node values will succeed. You need to be aware because most of the time, in all the nodes inside the structure, they don't have a value. So don't expect that value will work. Be aware, that's rule number one. Now let's go to the next level. We are getting the next node, but here I'm doing it by trying to find this, this name. I'm intentionally trying to find an invalid name, invalid node name. We don't have any node called invalid node name here. This method, find node, will give you a result only if it finds it. So this is a good one. This is a bit safer. Let's run it. Then you can see that find node didn't find any invalid node name. Then XML node is nil. It was not assigned. So this is a good point to you. Then you do the normal checking. You do the checking that XML node was assigned or not. In this case, it wasn't assigned, then you're safe. You simply don't do anything. So this is one way to make sure that whatever you are looking for, make sure that it's found first. Don't assume that it's there. Use find node. Then when you need to check is whether the, the node was assigned or not. If, if it didn't find it, you get a nil XML node. Now, second option is to get an invalid node with the properties. There is. Uh, Delphi style, you know that you can use properties for many things. Uh, XML nodes are not the exception. So this is a property you need to use. From the root element, which is XML node one, you get child nodes, which is a property that holds a collection of old children nodes. And then you have yet another property, which is actually the, the nodes list because children nodes, children nodes, child nodes has other properties. This is the key one you need to use. Nodes with the open brackets, just like any other property in Delphi, and I'm calling it with invalid node name two. Then see what happens here. I step through it, I call the property. Oh, guess what? If you see LXML node here, it is assigned. But how come? 
if this thing doesn't exist in the XML file. We don't have that kind of uh, node here. Well, there is one thing that you need to be aware of is that the proper, if you use the properties of the XML document object model, there is an option. Hold on. There is an option which I need to show you here. Here. The document object model component has these options. And by default, it has this one option called node auto create. This is to me a pretty dangerous option, but this is the way they design it. It's set checked by default. What this property, this option does is that like in the case I just shown to you, if you use a property and the node is not found, it will create it. So if that's what you're doing, what you're trying to do, maybe you will want this option if you are assembling an XML file. You are creating a new one. You are creating an object uh, document on memory and you are just adding the notes. And yeah, then enable that one option because it will create it automatically and return it to you. But if you're reading from an existing XML object model document, then this is pretty dangerous because you may have a typo just by one thing and it'll be very hard to debug your application because you made a typo, but when calling the property, it will work and it will give you a node. And guess what? This node is totally valid. When I call N2, it has a name, which is exactly the wrong name, the one that I used there. So I'm just letting you know that using the properties is very nice because everything in Delphi uses properties, but be aware of this thing. In this case, these properties, go save and make sure you don't have that option enabled, which is what I'm gonna show you in a moment. Okay, now on the next one is, I'm repeating the exact same part of code. I will use the properties of an XML node, but I'm going to disable the options. So this is the, to do it in code, on code I'm removing the option with the auto create. And then I'm getting an exception. And since I'm, I'm catching it with try accept, then no problem, I'm in control. So this is one option to go. If you, if you rely on properties, make sure this option is disabled and then just do your normal due diligence with the try accept. I'm gonna go faster because I'm consuming a bit amount of time here. Uh, I'm getting the real one here with the right name. And one thing is, as everything in Delphi, um, some properties are the default ones. So here you can get by the nodes, don't, don't use nodes, just get child nodes and you run the property directly. Nodes is the default property of an XML node. So this is a little shorter syntax for the same thing. Now I got the real thing XML node here. And then I'll just go faster. I got the name message header. And then if this is a final node, a one that has text, just like this one here, I'm at this node right now. Sorry, I'm, I'm at the text here. If it's a node element, there is this property called its text element. So you can use this one to check whether it is a leaf node or not. Then call the node value only if it's truly a text element. And this one you can go save. So in this case, it's a text element and then you can get it. But this is one thing, that the text element, sorry, I got this thing got confused again. Is text element only applies for nodes. It doesn't apply for attributes. This is another catch. Don't think that uh, attributes can also be used for the for this function. Is text element will only work with nodes. So it will work only when I get to this node, to this one here, but it won't work if I'm in an attribute. Let me go back. Okay, I'll, I'll just step quickly here. Same thing happening here. I'm trying now to read the attribute, but I'm using the 
child notes property. If you are reading an attribute, you need to use the right property. There's a difference. So if it's an attribute, the one you need to get, there's the attribute notes property of the XML node. So this one will have only children notes, but if you want an attribute, you need to use the attribute notes. Okay, let's get this one. And same as the previous ones that I just showed to you, uh, since I'm using invalid name, then it's, it's I'm trying catching that because I'm putting wrong names. Now I'm getting the, the final one, the right one. Then I got a node value. And I got finally the value. Then I will update in the screen. So you got, uh, I have already this field on the, on, the, on the screen. There's another way to do it much faster, which is combining everything that I just showed to you. So you can hear, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm loading the XML file. And then here, I'm directly assigning the first field by using XML document, document element, which gets me the top node, then child nodes, the next node, which is message header, and then attributes, which is source. So with this syntax, I do all at once. But you need to be aware that whatever you're doing works. You, the, you need to uh, enclose this with a try catch so that it works flawlessly. Here I just go simple because I know that my, my XML file is compliant, but you should entrap this with try catch like, like I showed you on the previous example. So same here, I'm getting this attribute, document version date. And then on the next one, I will be getting that born child node that has a text. And this is the way to get the property text directly with this syntax. So I'll just go quickly on this. And now you see I have all the three nodes here. I have here an XML tree viewer to show to all of you. Here I'm initializing it. And this is the tree viewer. It, it's a custom viewer that I put here together for this application. You can use it if you want. It shows you in a tree view the contents. It has different colors depending whether it's a text node or an attribute. Attributes are shown in blue. The text nodes are shown in, in brown, light brown. And you can also see the raw XML file here. This is the raw XML file already formatted. And let me do here some changes. I'm gonna hit modify, then gonna do save. Then we do the reverse thing. We're doing the exact same thing, which is get the root element and then assign. We're just reversing the assignment. The same syntax that I showed to you works in reverse mode. And I'll just do it quickly here. And then you see, when I see the document, I wanna watch the document with the viewer, you see here, modified, here, modified. So that's the way to actually parse XML files manually using the XML document object model in Delphi. I'll just quickly show you another use case. Oh, by the way, since this is a, a multi-platform multi application, and because I set the, the vendor to be OmniXML, this will also work with other applications. Let me show you here by running it for Mac. And that is one of the reasons I put the document embedded on the application. So you, need, you don't need to rely on transferring files. But again, this is just to show you that the code that I show you works the same in any of the supported platforms by Delphi. I have my Mac OS application here. So I load the file. I can do also I save it and then I view the document. And my viewer is also working in multi platform. So you see here modified and XML text with a modified. Okay, so that's it with the manual use of the document object model. I'll just quickly show you another use case 
which I did a presentation some months ago, but just a quick uh, explanation of when you know that your XML file is compliant and you want to transfer it into a data set, then you can use this tool, which is XML Mapper. For XML Mapper, you run the tool from The way to start it, you need to, to get the latest version, you need to run the Get It Manager, and then on the Get It Manager, install it. The built-in XML mapper from RAT Studio in a fresh installation is like this. This is not the latest version. You need to run the Get It Manager so you can get the latest one. This is the latest version. In XML mapper, what you do is you load the schema document from the purchase order. Then this is the visual representation and XML Mapper tries to find those repeating elements. So this is the, the neat feature here. And it, mentioned, it puts them with these asterisks here. It means, oh, this is a repeating element and it has a data set icon here. So once XML Mapper finds those here, then you can define, create a, a data set version of it. So on the right hand side, you will see a data set version and here is a repeating element, which is created as a, a data set with all these repeating records. Then you create a transformation and you can test it right here. You see that it created this and here is the nested data set. Once you have- that is actually, uh, uh, I'll just put Varj in a second actually, <laughs> Miguel. And uh, it is actually, uh, we've had a few questions and you've j actually just answered a couple as well. Um, I think we're probably going to have to cut it a bit short because we yes. do have some more sessions. Um, yes. But on, what, uh, what I'd yeah. like to do is get you uh, live on camera. Is that possible? Uh, yeah, sure. Let me just cut it short. Actually, I will just cut it here. I only wanted to show that this works, but I'm not, I'm not explaining how it works. I was just yeah. showing it. And then just showing this order. It's included in the uh, demos that they can download. Uh, so just showing how what that I'm not stopping on the explaining this because it was already explained in another uh, presentation. And then sure. you get this one here. And then you get it converted here. And you see that here are the line items of the invoice. So all is done with XML mapper and the runtime components. Uh, the, the only catch with XML mapper is that as I showed previously, is not included in all versions of Delphi. But that's basically it. And yeah, let sure. me now. Okay, Martha, do you want to uh, um, get us to go live, if possible? Um, Miguel, you probably need to turn your camera on. Yes. Oh, there's me. <laughs> That's a start. And uh, as soon as Miguel, he, he's got to wrangle his hardware. You know how it is. Uh, I think he, well... Yeah, oh, I see him in the previews. So that's a good start. There you go. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Fine, but I'm not moving. I'm frozen on that screen. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? That that's good enough. We can hear you perfectly. So that uh, I, I think you, you you're you're frozen in a good position. I think. Uh, hang on. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, look. Uh, let me ask the questions anyway, because um, yeah, uh, we've ahead. had quite a few questions, and some of them quite important. Apart from people saying hello from Texas. Uh, I'm also in Texas. I'm in uh, d the Dallas area. Um, if you're from Texas, you'll understand where Levon is. And that, I live actually in Levon, so suburb of Texas. There you are. We can see you again. But but I'm frozen, am I? Yeah, you're still frozen. Don't worry about it. That's fine. Uh, okay, so um, a couple of questions that are specific about the XML. Um, th and actually, many of these questions are from Barton. Um, so how do you deal with XML files that do not have a schema? Or that you do not have a schema for what uh, do you do in that case uh, but then you're talking about the xml mapper not the dom object model right yeah i think so i i think that's the question he's asking there is and the answer yeah, XML is XML mapper. Is... yeah let me do the quick answer so the first version the first thing that i did when i concentrated so much time on the actual parsing one by one that works regardless you but you need to be side guarded as i show in my code examples because you don't know what to expect, whether you're ex the, the, cat, the key thing on this code that I showed 
is even you have some expectations on the actual structure of the XML file, you should not take it for granted. You need to do your due diligence of uh, guarding each time you try to get one piece of information. That's it. Having said that, by doing it manually, you can read anything. You don't need any schema. You are manually going and traversing through each one of the nodes and getting whether they have attributes or children nodes or whatever, whatnot. So doesn't stop you. You are actually in manual mode. You are parsing it manually. Do you need us? Yeah. And I think, yeah. I think yeah. that you actually answers the, the next question as well about the headers, which is the same thing, really. The header of the XML file? Yeah. In in strict mode, the, the document object model should yield an error saying I didn't find a header, but I, in reality it doesn't. It just takes the default value, which is assuming there is version one and UTF encoded. But some libraries might be stricter and will yield an error because, strictly speaking, it, it, it must have a header. Yeah, I, th I think the answer is there. It'll do its best. <laughs> and, and if it's really messed up, then it's not going to work. And, there, you know, it, it's good and it's performant and does a good job. But, um, you know, there's no such thing as a magic solution to anything. It, it, it's like anything. Garbage in, garbage out. If the, if the XML is just awful, then uh, then, you know, it's going to be a problem. A badly formed XML is obviously a problem. I mean, if you've got, you know, missing closing or opening tags and things like that, then then eventually the, the XML mapper is going to go, no, I can't deal with this. This is just yeah. too, too bad. So, so yeah. And uh, so, again, Barton, who I believe is probably going to be one of your biggest fans at this moment, because uh, most of it, the questions are from him. Um, what are the reserve characters for XML and how do you work around them? Mm. Say that again, the please. Answer. What are the reserved characters for XML and how do you work around them? So, in other words, what can't you put in XML data or, or in an XML um, attribute? Yes, that's a good question because it seems like a pretty arbitrary. Why would you use one versus another? Uh, in, and in my experience, every time this is like a very open question. Uh, I think what was meant to be, and I'm thinking because by reading through the document object models from the W3 school uh, website, the, the one that develops the standard, what it was meant to see is that the real fields carrying main data should always be a leaf node. You would put it onto some kind of leaf node because it would resemble somehow a field like in a database. And those like uh, optional things to change, like, uh, oh, this is the, the specific, um, like the length of a string or like uh, the specific coding that the string may have, those should go in an attribute. It's like a secondary piece of information. But yeah. what I have found in the real life is they are so, you would say, oh, this was meant to be like the main piece of information, but it's an, an attribute. And then the other way around something that was meant to be like a minor piece of information and it's a leaf node. So in the end, it depends of who made it. Each one has its own arbitrary conceptual thing. And this is the key thing by XML. You do, you can do either way, no problem. You just, and this is the key reason why you need a schema if you want to automate the translation because the schema will define those rules. The schema will tell you where is each kind of information stored where whether it's an, an attribute or an, a leaf node, and whether that leaf node is repeating or is encapsulated with a parent node, blah, blah, blah. All that is in a schema. So to answer his question quickly, XML Mapper was designed mainly to use schemas. If you have a schema for a given XML file, XML Mapper will work beautifully because then it can get all the information needed. But if you don't have it, you have the option to load the raw XML file and then XML Mapper will try to do some guessing. It has some basic logic to try to guess what was the schema used to put together that XML file. But you get uh, less than opt suboptimal results if you go it that way. You need to be, you just need to manually be sure that it's working the way you expect it to. And maybe later yeah. we need to repeat another webinar with very uh, specific options now that we will deploy in a new XML Mapper. Yeah, we, we will be doing another one <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay, and, and the final question, which uh, kind of makes sense as well. Um, you did answer it, but it is worth repeating. And in fact, if people um, 
I'm looking at where my thing is. If people scan this rad off, uh, if they're using an old version of Delphi, they can actually um, get some money off. I forget what the exact details are, but it's something like 20% and a year's free support or something like that. I don't know. But if they go there, they can scan it uh, and get that off a bit. The answer, the, the question was, where can you get the XML mapper? And I'm going to let you answer that because you know, it's your baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I said, uh, if you have the, in your normal Delphi installation, you may not have it if you don't have, I show the matrix of the features, so not all versions of Delphi and Rat Studio have the tool. So if you do have it, you will find it hanging right below the tools menu option. And if when you started, you see an old style legacy app, that's the original version. And then you can just go to get it with the get it package manager and upload the latest version. And the latest version yeah. will show just like the one I show. We'll have the same theming, color theming as a normal modern uh, IDE. And then you are on the latest version. Yeah. And, I, and I, you know, I want to say that you, you're one of the guys that worked on it, and, and Roger was another one. And he did say, oh, there's an NDA uh, and uh, about what can and can't be said. And I get to choose what I'm going to say. But I know it's been made public because I did check beforehand that, uh, that uh, the, this was a project that we had some MVPs work on, and you were one of them. Uh, and I, I want to thank you, you know, from everybody as well that um, – the work that was put into this was quite astounding. It's a very, it's a, a testament to you guys' skills and um, the demand that was, um, you know, quite high for this product to be brought into the uh, 21st century because it, it was a little bit, the, the original version, as you mentioned, not only was the user interface a little bit outdated, but there were lots of things that needed doing on it. And, uh, and you know, I think you put a lot of effort into it because I saw a lot of what went on behind the scenes as well. So, um, you know, well done to you. And thank you for explaining it as well. You did a really good job of it. And, and to Roger, who I know is watching uh, somewhere um, because he, he was around as well. Okay. Um, um, is there a final word that you want to put in before we move on? Because the next session is quite short. So uh, we've allowed you to run over a little bit <laughs> because we no, okay, sure. Off. Yeah, there's some other questions out there. Um, XML path, uh, the X path, that's something we want to add to XML Mapper because X path seems to be a pretty standard way to define. When you are in XML speak, how do you tell someone else the specific node you're pointing to? X path is the standard. And Delphi doesn't have uh, any library for uh, X path yet. So we're working on having something uh, either added directly to XML Mapper or totally independent that you can also use with the XML object model. Uh, definitely that's something that is needed when you are doing heavy work with XML files. You can see, I show you as a sample, a real life uh, invoice purchase order document. They can get very complex in the number of levels that you have. So it becomes pretty difficult to explain it if you don't use XPath as part of your syntax. And by the I way, do. on yep yeah sorry carry on yeah they're also uh, telling us about the code the sample code yes it will be available so bear with me i'll post it and um, let you send it to them once once uh, it's ready on the repository it should be no more than 24 hours but yes it will be on the same recording as this presentation uh, yeah so I, ha I had to laugh i had to laugh because when your video froze someone uh, Tian Nord, who's actually been with us all week, said it has to be cold in Italy right now if he's frozen. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think you've got that right because he, <laughs> Miguel is not, not Italian at all. <laughs> he's Mexican. So <laughs> I'm, I'm right. You're Mexican, right? You've got a Mexican email address. I'm sure that's uh, correct. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 Italian. Yeah. I get people telling me I'm Australian or South African. I, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, uh, I'm clearly British, but carry on. You know, I don't really mind. I'm actually technically, I'm an American. So, and also um, uh, Barton as well. So, and I'm going to show show this because it was quite funny. Uh, he just wanted to thank you for answering those questions. And he said, if you ever come to Fort Worth, I owe Miguel a grass fed beef steak. So there you go. Uh, uh, and Barton, uh, I actually live in the DFW area, so. Mm. Steaks, they're good. Yeah, Texas steaks are amazing. Anyway, thanks a lot, Miguel, and for getting, being a good sport as well. And I, I really appreciate it. Um, flying live, you're pretty crazy. Uh, I, I always say to people, don't do live sessions, not on webinars anyway. Uh, record them, but you know, sometimes it happens, and that's absolutely fine. Oh, and Martin says he's serious about the steak. So, Miguel, if you come back, 
Oh, and also, apparently, I might get a steak as well. So there you go. I'm joking. Uh, I'm fine. Yeah. Believe me, I, I need salad, not steak. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Miguel. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'll speak to you soon. I bump into you around. You're an MVP and a very active guy, and uh, uh, you're very well valued. Thank, thanks for your time.